Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer, writer, speaker, and God enthusiast. I am fueled by helping women achieve their emotional healing so that they can live the abundant life God has for them. In this podcast series, we provide faith-based inspiration to men from emotional hurt along with tools and tips for emotional wellness. In your journey, as you apply these tools and tips, you will begin to live the transformed life that you always desire. In fact, you will possess a new you. It's so good to have you back. I hope you enjoyed learning about having an abundant life, as well as getting to learn a little bit more about me. Yes, those radio interviews, whew, we talked about a lot. Anyways, we did talk about too, that a good life does require little work, but it's work that pays off in the end. As we move forward, I want to go into more detail about meditation. In both radio interviews, I spoke about how I use meditation to help guide my thoughts and emotions. I needed to cling to something that was good all the time, as well as reinforce that I'm loved. Ladies, I do not know if you ever needed to feel more loved. Actually, you can't see me, but I'm raising my hand to that. I had many moments, and I mean many, where I just needed to know that I was loved. But guess what? We're going to talk about some scriptures that go in a little bit more detail about who we are in God. And before we dig into the Bible, because you know how I love my little Bible, you know I love my little scripture, I'm going to share a recent experience. You might be wondering, why? What they got to do anything? Well, I hope you realize, too, that yes, I love the Bible. But uh, I kind of also like to talk. That's the podcast. Yeah, I'm talking. Anyways, a couple of weeks ago, the weather broke and we finally had some nice temperatures. For y'all who are up north, I commend you. This winter has been tough. Needs to say, since I'm a little down south, for a small moment, brief moment, we got some good weather. I got a little excited and I said, I'm going I'm to take advantage of this. Now, I'm not the type of person who puts all my winter clothes away and immediately put on shorts. Yeah, that's not me. But I do like to get outside and be a part of good weather. And one of the ways that I do that is by riding my bike. Actually, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine got me started on that riding that bike again. And I will say that I have been a happy camper ever since. It's been wonderful. My inner child has come out just by pedaling. Anyways, I always get overly excited about silly stuff. But I went out, I got my bike together, and I said, I'm going on a trail. Now, as I drove to the trail and I got to where it was supposed to be, it was blocked off. I forgot that even though the little sun came out, there was a lot of rain before. So every time it rains real hard, they block off the trail so we ain't get all underwater. Well, me being creative, I said, if I go a little further down the road, I know there's another entry point, and I should be able to get in on this trail. I drove my little mile, went down the road, and sure enough, it was blocked off too. But this time, as I was looking around, trying to figure out how to get on the trail, I saw other people on the trail walking around, having them a good old time in that good weather. I looked once more and I was like, okay, how do I get myself on this trail? So I drove to another spot and that too was blocked off. As I began to turn around, I saw this little couple and I stopped and I said, hey, man, I've been driving around. I'm trying to figure out how to get on the trail. Do you have any ideas? And they looked at me and they said, well, I thought you knew because you was hauling the bike. They replied once more, we're just going to walk around the barricade. Join us. It's going to be fun. 
I looked at them. I thought for a moment, and they were so sweet. They smiled, and they won me over. I said, okay, I'll join you guys. But they walked on ahead, and I went back and put, put down my bike and parked and all that good stuff. I finally got myself situated, and then I went and rode on the trail. I went around a little barricade. Now, there was a point where I was like, okay, I have two options. I can go that way over there where I just came from, but I knew that it was probably underwater. Therefore, if I took that route, I wouldn't have been able to get very far. And I had some time. I wanted to enjoy my ride. It was still nice outside. The other option was a whole new venture. And I looked at it. Even though I didn't know where it went, I decided I wanted to ride my bike. So I went on the new part of the venture. And as I was riding, of course, I kept seeing all these people. And at one point, it became a little muddy, but I just rode right through it and was smiling at the people. It was a good ride by day. And as I tell you this story, you're probably like, what in the world? What does this got to do with meditation? As I said, I do like my stories. But this story is very, I saw right away the relation to how we identify the scriptures that I am about to share. Think about it for a moment. Do we think of ourselves as being wonderful, beautiful, loved, and fearless? We may see other people demonstrating these qualities, but think, man, I don't feel this way about myself. I want to feel this way about myself. I want to exude these qualities. And this is similar to the people who are on the trail. I wanted to get on the trail. I noticed them. They look like they're having a great time. They figured it out. Like, how do I figure it out? The same thing in terms of how do we think about ourselves? Do we look at ourselves in this wonderful light like how we look at other people? Also, as you try to become these qualities, remember, wonderful, beautiful, love, fearless, you walk around like that, you may experience some roadblocks. Remember how many times I had to find another way to get on the trail? Then once I got on the trail, I could have taken the familiar path to continue to think poorly of myself because I'm used to it. Sometimes it's so easy to revert to negative thinking. It is familiar. Instead, take the new adventure. With the scriptures that I'm about to read and share with you guys, it may seem a little awkward at first. It may be hard to believe that God is talking about you, that you were created this way. But I encourage you, embrace the new territory, embrace the new adventure. Go ahead, strut around. I am wonderful, I am beautiful, I am loved, and I'm fearless. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes in a new adventure, we may get a little muddy. Someone may want to pull you through the mud, but you speed ahead as you continually to embrace what the Bible says about you. All right, now, I'm got myself all pumped up. But why don't y'all listen with me? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's look at four scriptures. And actually, three of these scriptures came directly from the radio interviews. Therefore, I just want to spend a little time highlighting them and, and going over uh, what they mean in their power. The first passage is very popular and quoted everywhere. Yes, it is. It is Psalm 139, 13 through 15. It states, for you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. I have a question. Have you ever felt invisible? Have you ever had a moment, and it may sound extreme, but I'm gonna just say it, a moment where you stated, why was I born? Like this life is hard, it's crazy. To those who felt invisible, this passage reveals that in a quiet place where no one else could see, God thought about every detail of your life. He thought about your existence, and how you should be made. He was skillful as he molded and shaped you into life. His skill created a fearfully and wonderful woman, a wonderful you. Just think about it for a moment. The creator of the world, this massive world that we have, God spent time bringing you into life. But he did it as a craftsman creating his masterpiece, a work of outstanding artistry. Do you walk around believing and knowing that you are an outstanding art of God? In that art, you are wonderful and fearfully. See, mm -hmm. God is just showing off in you. Isn't that exciting? Let's keep going. The second passage is Ezekiel 16, 14 through 15. It states, Then your fame went forth among the nations on account of your beauty, for it was perfect because of my splendor, which I bestowed on you, declares the Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and played the harlot because of your fame. And you poured out your holidays on ever or every passerby who might be willing. In God's creation of his masterpiece, that's you, that's me, your beauty was made perfect. Okay, now, I want you to think for a second. Do you walk around with a strut knowing that you are beautiful and your beauty is perfect? <laughs> Just think about it for a second. You are perfect in your beauty because of the masterpiece that God created you to be. But I'll be honest, what happens? Sometimes we start comparing ourselves. We say to our lips, oh, you're not full enough, or my nose is too wide. And darn them hips. I must be honest, I do yell at them hips quite frequently. Despite our perceptions of ourselves, because of God being a master and skillful in his creation, our beauty is perfect, so much so that it's made known to others. Now, you may not think so, but it is. But here's the catch, though. In verse 15, we sell our beauty to those around us. We forget who we are, and then we actually pimp ourselves out. Yep, that's what the heart means. Like, I'm pimping myself out. 
there are many of us, and I have this problem myself, so as I'm saying many, I'm included in the many, but there's many of us who are in relationships where we're being mistreated, not valued, because we've taken what God has created and given it to someone who does not know our value. Ultimately, we have pimped ourselves out. Okay, I wanna move on to the next scriptures, a little bit more happier, but I do want you to know that we're perfect and in that perfection, we don't have to give it away and make it something that small when God gave us all this incredible splendor because he thought so specifically about who we are and how we should be made. But I'm repeating myself. Let me get back to the scriptures. The next scripture is Lamentations 3, 21 through 24. It states, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Question or questions, because I have multiple. Have you ever had those days where you just kept hitting the wall? You, you get up and boom, 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 you're back in the same place and your head hurting because you're just hitting the wall. Or how about life just keeps spinning and spinning and it's spinning out of control? Just, just ridiculous, just crazy. Or maybe you just don't feel loved, very simply. This scripture is a very encouraging scripture because it's stating that no matter how we feel, or life circumstances, we still have hope. Because God's love for us never ceases; It never ends. Not only does his love remain with us despite the hurt and the chaos, but his compassions for us never fail. That means despite my circumstances, every day, I get to wake up knowing that God loves me. He has compassion towards me and he is faithful to me. I know every now and then some of us may have experienced those random acts of kindness. I know I had one of those moments where I went to a store and someone had paid for uh, my items beforehand. They paid it forward, if you want to call it as such. But I want to encourage you and, and, and have you think a little bit that in those moments, those little random acts of kindness, that's God. That's him loving us. He's being compassionate and faithful towards us. That's who he is as we continue to have our journey. I hope you've enjoyed the scripture so far. Here's the last one, and I'm telling you, it is a bang. It's Psalm 27, one through four. It states, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumble and fail. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. 
One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Now, ladies, this is your battle scripture. Yes, it is. I'll be lying. I would if I said that we would not endure hard times or people would not act fool against us. Especially when you start getting your strut on, you start being a little more confident, people just start hating. They will come in droves because you have something that they want. And as soon as that happens, boy, do they come out fighting and acting the poop. I digress. But with this passage, it's clear. Take heart and be full of courage because God will deliver. Yes, he will. He said, I don't even have to be afraid. He's going to work it out. They're going to try to come. Mm -mm. The Lord is my defense. Who should I dread? And after a while, they're going to stumble. They're going to fall. Yes, they is. They ain't going to be messing with me all day. That's the Lord protecting his babies, his daughters. But as God does his thing, what is asked of us? That we seek him and dwell in his house. And in fact, it says, and to meditate in his temple. Yes. As everything else goes on and be acting food, at the end of the day, the Lord, he got us. He got us. Ladies, I encourage you to meditate on these scriptures, to read them over and over until they become part of your being. I know I said meditate. And actually, during the interview, Keisha, the one who was interviewing me, she made the statement, I don't know how to meditate. I'll be honest, I had to learn that myself. So next week, we actually have someone who's going to be joining our show, and they're going to be talking about biblical meditation and providing practical tools so that we can implement this in our lives. But until then, take a moment and go back through these scriptures and repeat them to yourselves and and get to know them, become familiar with them. And as I stated previously, there are going to be moments where it just feels awkward and, and you have to push through and say, you know what? I'm going to believe these things for me. This is what the Bible says about me. And I encourage you that as you do that, you will begin to get a strut. You will know that you're beautiful that you're fearfully, that you're wonderful, that you're loved, and that God got your back. Ooh, go ahead and get your strut on. Until then, have a great week.